Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new Cinema 4D tutorial about how to model, texture, light, and render these cool looking tube socks with some neat patterns in Cinema 4D. So this is the final render we'll work towards and if we look in my Cinema 4D project, we got these tube socks that are folding over each other and there's a couple different colors. If I jump out of my camera, we can kind of look around my scene and I even have them propped up using a bit of dynamics to kind of put them inside of this invisible little container so that when I run it, I can have some realistic movement for it to drop on there. But how these are being created is not anything too insane with cloth and crazy dynamics. It's actually a couple lofts and doing some fun stuff with the textures to get these patterns and the stage and lights. And then just basic dynamics but using these fun little invisible container shells to drop them into place so we get a little bit of realism and can control our scene a bit if we want to stage this when we're thinking about product photography and kind of how we can set this up. So let's get started. I'm just going to create a new project. And to get started with our sock, I'm just going to grab this reference that I found. And if you just do a search online for socks, you can get some good examples. And I think I use one of these basic ones kind of just as a reference, so it doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is go into my viewports and on my side one on the right, I'm going to click here, press option V for my viewport options for here. And then I'm going to click it again to make sure that this image pops up and I can find an image as the background. And I'm just going to click the little dots and I just grabbed one of these sock images. And again, it could be anything. I'm only going to use this for reference for a couple minutes to get started. So I'll put that as my viewport background so I can model on top of it. And I'll just take the transparency up a bit. And this can be my basis of kind of my sock shape before I start adding all the folds on top of it. It started building this. All we're going to do is actually use a bunch of circles up here and drop them into the loft and then just add more and more circles to make it more complicated. So I'm going to grab this circle and I'm just going to rotate it into place down to zero and we can see it looks like just a flat line. I'm just going to rotate that into place on the top of this and move it and use T to scale it down a bit and just get that as kind of the basis of the bottom of the sock. And since this is just a line, it can kind of get in the way. So one tip I like to use is if we press option D that hides our little control, but we can still scale it. So how this is going to work is, as I said, we'll put it in a loft. So this is my basis circle and we can use that to draw out the edges here. So I'm just going to copy paste this circle and then move it into the top. So this will be our top of our sock and we can just kind of block out the edges. But it is important the order that these go in because when we drop them in the loft in a second, that's how it's going to build out. So what I want to do is this is my top of my sock up here, this first circle, and it's going to go down to the bottom. So I'm going to command and drag this one to make another copy and move and rotate that and just scale it into place to be this corner. And we'll continue to edit this. And again, just block out kind of our basic shape of our sock from the side, just kind of getting lines and scaling it as much as we need to for reference to get this started. And just to point out what the hell this is for, if I grab a loft up here, and grab all of these circles and drop them in. We can see that it starts to build out this tube shape. And this is not too useful yet, but you can kind of see where this is going. So it's going to connect all these circles. And if I go to display lines, we can see what's happening here. So in my side view down here, I can just keep holding command and making a duplicate of this and then dragging each circle over, but making sure it's within my loft. And it's just going to keep connecting these and building out this shape. So I'll just keep connecting, holding command, and changing the world transform if I need to, making sure it's in my loft, as now that's the second one that has not been. And just kind of block out this. And I can turn off the loft at any time if I need, which can be helpful if I'm just making my lines, dropping in place, rotating. And then I can just turn it on when I'm done and make adjustments as I need to along the way. And all I'm going to do is keep doing that. And then at the 
end here, just make a pretty small one. And we'll see what we're gonna do with the caps in a second. And again, I'll just move that into place, scale it down. And now if we turn our loft back on, we can kind of see what we're getting. So we're getting kind of our basic shape of a sock. So what we're gonna wanna do with the cap is here on the front, I'm just gonna copy and paste one and make it really small and just push it out and scale it down. And we could turn on up here for the loft caps as well for both. But in this case, it doesn't make as much of a difference and I actually don't want that. So I'm just going to do it using a circle at the end and I can push it out as I need to. Now for the top, if I rotate around, we can see that it just ends and that's a problem. But how we can address this is if I duplicate this top one, it's gonna make a copy and I can scale that in just a bit and then duplicate it again on the top. And if I push it down, it's gonna pull this back in and we just need this interior one to go as far as it's gonna be out of the way of the camera. So if our shot is up here, we don't really need to worry about what's in there, but far enough down to where it hides that top cap. So that's our basic sock shape, but that's not very interesting and we gotta add a bit more detail. And how we can do this and why it's nice that this is just circles is if I grab any of these, so let's just grab this one that was our original bottom one at the root of the top. And if I move it up and scale it a bit, you can see that it's starting to mimic that idea of folding. And I can use just moving, scaling, and rotating them a bit to get that idea of it folding and just continue to build this out as much as I want to and just use kind of these basic things to make it look interesting and kind of make it look like it's all jumbled up like we saw on that example that I put together. So we'll end up with a bunch of circles but what's nice like I said is this is just a loft so these are just circles and we can go back in and change this and tweak it as much as we want later and none of it's really permanent and it's a really easy way to model stuff and still have a lot of control later without it being really destructive. So you can see we're getting lots of folds and I'll just keep going and hopefully this doesn't just end up being a four hour long tutorial about making these folds, but I think you get the idea and the point is it's pretty easy to duplicate a circle with holding command and dragging it and then just keep going and just add a little bit of variety by rotating, moving, scaling and just get a bit of folds. And we'll just keep going here. And we can see that we wanna make sure we don't intersect that inner point. And that might be a good point of this last one and these ones that we just scale it down. We can see here, we don't want it to expand beyond our interior sock, cause obviously that would be a problem because then we can see that it's not real. And I'll just grab this one, scale it up. And as much as I want to, as I probably just said 10 times, just to add more detail, I know that all these folds are gonna help when we're lighting this and trying to add more realism to it later with the lights and textures and all that. So that's good for the top. We got this weird looking top part and that's fine. So let's focus on the bottom. And these are all circles and that's probably not how anyone's sock and foot is actually shaped. So what we can do if we look outside of our loft and grab some of these ones is down here for the circle, there's ellipse. And if we turn that on, we can flatten some of these out a bit. So it looks more like someone's actual foot would. If we think about the shape of a foot that would be fitting in here and try and make this look a little more real. And that came out looking like some weird snake thing. So we can go back, fix that and leave that on and maybe change the angles of some of these and hope that this gets looking a little better and less like a weird pig snout thing. And that's a little better. And again, we can just continue to kind of shift these around. Now we can continue to add folds to the inside too, as we want. And we can just repeat that same process with the top of this as much as we need to and as much detail as we want to add with kind of some bending throughout the bottom area of the sock. So again, we wanna make sure that they're not overlapping cause that'll kind of ruin it. And just enough detail knowing that we can add a million more circles later if we really wanted to. And we wanna make sure that this looks like a foot so we can grab some of these and again, just scale it maybe a bit and make it 
more of an oval. All right, so we got a bunch more folds, and if we just do a quick command R on this, we can see that this is helping, and if we go to render settings and turn on ambient occlusion and do another quick render, we can see that all these little folds and details really help to add some lighting and will really help when we do everything for lights and textures. Now you can see that it's a little rough and how we can address this for when we're doing high quality renders later is in our loft settings for object, we have our subdivision so we could add more to smooth it out and add complexity or we can drop this whole thing into a subdivision surface which is kind of the similar idea of it'll just smooth this all out now we only want to add as much geometry as we really need as you can see just straight dropping in subdivision surface really smooths this out but can add quite a bit of render time because it's adding a lot more geometry but if we're getting issues where it looks a little jagged that's how we can deal with it now this is fine for the model and that was pretty quick to get this together and we could keep going, but let's start to talk about texturing this thing. So I'm just gonna down here, double click and make a new texture and we wanna get that striped pattern that we had as an option. So if I double click my material for color, how I'm gonna do this is if I go to texture gradient and then click this gradient, what I can do is start to make blocks of color. So say that it starts with red and then goes to white and there's a block of white and do them two at a time so that we can have these stripes that we can see that are start to developing at the top. So I'll just keep doing this. And what we can do is just get a couple of them. So it goes white, white, red, red, and these could be whatever colors you want. And you could always change this later and have a lot of control, which again is why it's good to build these sorts of things in Cinema 4D. We could do this with a graphic in Photoshop, but this makes it easy to edit. So we have kind of our blocks of color and let's just do a couple more to make it interesting. And I'll get this little turquoise and then white. So that's enough because we can use our texture settings to loop it later and what i can do is on this gradient i can right click and distribute knots and you can see that that smooths them out but it's getting a little hazy so what we want to do is grab these white ones in between and just butt them up closer to the colors and we'll get a little tighter gradient and that will do for our colors so for that what we can do is drop it on top of our loft and we can see that it's projecting onto this, but it doesn't quite look right. So what we want to do is on the texture again for gradient, change this from type 2D U to 2D V, and then it's going to project the right way. And to get more of these, what we can do is click on the tag up here, and we want to seamlessly loop and tile this so we can add more tiles in V. And we can see that now we're getting a lot of stripes. And if we wanted the front to start with a specific color let's start it with a green like that we can just offset it a bit and again continue to tile as much as we want to get more color now if i do a render and i'll just turn off ambient occlusion real quick now we can see that we're getting our colors and if i turn on ambient occlusion you can see that those folds are definitely helping and i'll probably want to offset that a bit more so it does get to a solid color and again I can see that there's a little issue with the front of this so we'll want to fix that and we can just tighten up that circle a bit and now if we check this with option R just to get a little viewport render we can make sure that that's exactly how we want it. So I'll change this to something like 4.25 and then on that end circle just make sure it's really small so we're not getting that little dot that kept popping up. So that's the gradient but that's not really what socks look like. We need to push our material a little more and I'll turn off ambient occlusion for now. And what we need is some of that texture in there. And what I'm going to do is add a bump to get that and add noise. And that's not really going to get us there because this looks ridiculous. But what we can do is click noise and change this to a different one. So something like Luca comes out looking nice. And then on the bump, we can turn this strength up so you can see what's happening. And again, this is way too extreme. So we probably want to do like 25 or 50 and render that again. And we can blur our texture a bit and 
maybe even 100, 100, it's gonna blur it, but we're still gonna get a little bit of that. So if we're far away and we turn our strength down a bit, we can see that it is giving us a little bit of that texture that we would associate with socks. And again, if I turn on ambient occlusion, it's all starting to come together nicely. But this looks super bright and it's kind of just floating out there and not really working from a lighting perspective because we don't have any lights. So let's start setting up our full scene. So in the original one, we had this whole little set that it's on and these blocks that it's in and some cool lights. So let's start there and I'm going to turn on my grid for a second which will probably be defaulted on usually. And I've talked about in other tutorials how to build these out, but let's just build out a sweep. One of the other ways I've mentioned is if I just grab my Bezier curve, I'm just gonna draw one end of it. So say it starts here and this will be my floor and then I'll just draw a curve that it kind of smoothly goes up and then goes up pretty high up here in the sky and then bends backwards just to make sure we're not seeing anything up there. And I can smooth out all these lines a lot more if I want to later, but this will probably work for us. Now to get this to be a whole floor, what I'm going to do is take the spline and rather than copy paste it, I'm going to up here grab an instance and in my front view, I'm going to drag the instance way to the side and the original one way to the other side. and just get this taking up my whole scene. And then I'm gonna drop both of these into a loth. And what it's gonna do is connect these two. So now you see I have this big floor and my sock kind of floating out there. And now if I need to make any changes to this, if I turn off my loft and decide that I need to change one point, it's going to update both of them evenly. And then I can turn off my grid again. And we got one sock. We're going to start talking about setting up lights. So it would be good to set up our render settings for our main window. So I'm just going to do 960 by 540 since it's half of 1080 and it'll work well with this demo. And then I'm also going to add a camera in my main scene and hop into that so I can kind of start to block out what I'm thinking for where this angle is going to be. And for the camera, I'm going to actually use focal length. 24 and knock it down a bit so we get kind of a bigger area of view and can kind of make this like our hero shot of a sock so i'll just zoom in a bit and i'm gonna position my sock kind of closer to the floor so i can kind of get an idea of where i'm going even though we're going to use dynamics later to really drop it on there and just get it close to there and kind of get my camera roughly in place and there's my main sock. Maybe I'll rotate it a bit and we'll work in it from this view. Now, if I do a shift render, we can see that it's there, but it's not lit. And this background isn't doing anything interesting yet. And it's all kind of a jumbled mess. So maybe some of those are a little too big and wavy, but that's fine. We can always just grab a couple circles and scale them down. And that's looking a little better. So it's always a process. So now let's start talking about lighting this thing and getting our scene set up because that's a big part of it. So again, if I do a render, it's kind of bright and there's a specular highlight already added to this. And I don't want quite that much. We could maybe have a little, even though cloth probably wouldn't have much, but you can see it's a little too reflective. So I'm just going to take this down quite a bit and just have maybe just a little... If we do another render, you can see that that's really helping because we don't need all of that reflectivity within a sock because cloth probably would have barely any, if any, but we could leave a little bit on just to give a little bit of highlight. So now let's start setting up our scene and lighting it. We have just one sock. So to get that second one, rather than copy it, I'm going to go here and make an instance because then if I change the first one, it's not going to mess it up. And I'll just move that and rotate it roughly into place. And now let's start to really light this and make this look a lot better. So what I'm going to do to start lighting my scene is I'm just going to drop a basic light into my scene and shift it over and move it in the front a bit and a bit down. And this will be my key light. So I'll call this key. And I'm going to make this kind of an orangey reddish color and take that down a bit. And if I do a quick 
command R in here, we can see that that's way too intense and we could tone it down a bit with the color. But if we duplicate that light and I'll drag it over here and take the intensity down and then make it like a light bluish color, this can be our fill light and I'll call that fill and that's gonna really help to balance those lights out. So I'll do a shift R for this one and you can see that those are really working well together. And to add a little more detail on this, while I'm lighting my scene, I'm going to press Option R and we'll get our preview render. And I'm going to duplicate my fill and move it up a bit. And I'm just gonna create some different colored top lights on the top just to create a little bit of interest. So I'll make a green one that has a bit of color and move it over to the left side maybe a bit. And then I'm gonna duplicate that again by holding Command and drag it over. And this one will be maybe kind of a little pinkish color. And these are just gonna add a little bit of light. So again, I'll do a quick Shift R and it's not like it looks super extreme pink, but you can see that these little highlights and bits of detail really help. Now we're getting way too much dark shadows over here and our floor doesn't have any color and that's a problem. So let's start with making just a basic texture for our floor. So I'll double click, call this floor. And I'm just gonna make this kind of a tan color because that'll look nice with these products. And I'm gonna make it reflective, but add Fresnel so it's smooth. And then let's make this blurry. So I'll make it 10% blurry and that'll look nice with our product shot. So I'll drag that onto my floor and we can already see that this is starting to come together a lot. But like I said, these shadows are way too intense and we're just working with a still image. So if we go to our render settings, a couple things I'm gonna do is change this to our physical render. And then I'm gonna use effect global illumination. And this is gonna make the light bounce around in the scene and reflect back around like it would more in real life and take more render time. But we can see that that really helped to smooth everything out and really help with those shadows. So if I just, again, do a quick shift R with GI not on, we can see these issues with the shadows that we're getting and then I'll go back to render settings, turn it on. And if we wanted to change our samples up or down, that's gonna increase, decrease render time, but also increase the quality. So I'll just put this at low for now since we're just working. And then I'm gonna do another shift render with GI on and it's gonna bounce the slide around. You can see that we're getting a little preview of what's happening with that and it's gonna re-render it. And you can see that's pretty dramatically different because we're getting this light that's bouncing off of the floor onto our products and it's really helping to fill in those shadows. You can see that this might be a little too much because we're kind of losing some of our detail. So now that we have GI on, what we can do is put on this option R render and let's just take our lights down a bit because now we're getting light bouncing all over the place and we don't need so much of it and that'll really help to kind of get some of that gradation back in there. So I'll just tweak these a bit and then do another shift R with them adjusted. And now we can see we're getting a little bit of that back and this is really helping to add some detail. If we just look at our first render without global illumination on, way too harsh of shadows, and then our next one, a little too much light bounce around and too evenly lit and maybe a little too green and just a little bit of tweaks and we can bring the lights down a bit and balance that out a bit. And you can see these little top lights that are just these little pink and color highlights are really helping to add some interest to this. So we could probably even move our main lights out a bit so we're getting a little more gradation and know that we can keep tweaking our lights. So in our main scene, these are our main socks and let's create some more basic textured socks in the background. Maybe this is our big Christmas sale or we got a sale on colored stripes, but we still wanna show that we offer basic socks and also to just show what's happening with these textures and how this is all working out nicely when we texture and light this well. I'm gonna hold command and duplicate that main sock because I wanna change the texture so I don't want an instance. And I'm gonna duplicate my sock texture and double click that. I'll call this green and I'll just make a basic green color by clearing out this texture. So I'll just go to clear. And then for the color, let's make this kind of a darker green or whatever color you want. And we probably wanna turn up the bump a little. So now it's just a basic color. So I'll put this at like 35. And then I'm gonna hold command of this texture and drag it onto this copied sock. 
slide that sock over and maybe look at my top view so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll just put this one kind of back in the background a bit and call that green sock. And let's just duplicate that one again by holding command and dragging. And this will just be a basic white sock. So I'll grab this over here, rotate it just to show that, you know, our sock store has basic socks too. Don't come just for the striped socks, come for all socks. And then I'm gonna command and drag that green texture. And again, just change the name and the color to kind of a light gray to give it some interest and hold command and replace that texture. Call that white sock, sock. And now with these in there, let's do another shift R to get a full render. And as this is rendering, we can see that these little bits of details are really helping with these lights. Even though this is just a white sock, we're getting some pretty interesting lighting. We're getting these nice colored highlights. And we could probably on these ones tone down the specularity a bit so it doesn't look kind of plasticky. So let's take this down even further on just the basic colors. So we just get a little bit and then I'll just remember these numbers 15, 10, 10 and copy them over on the white. And that'll just help that little issue that we're getting there. So this is our main shot and we could move our camera down a little, make it a little more dramatic and this would work for us. This is fine if we're just getting a still render setup. But when I was setting this up, I came up with some basic ideas with dynamics to kind of have a little more control and natural movement of these falling on top of each other and making sure they're on the floor, but using some invisible objects to constrain them. So let's set that up. So for my main sock, I'm going to add right click simulation tag rigid body, our main dynamics tag. And then for my floor, I'm going to add right click simulation collider, and that's going to set up the main dynamics. But if I play, it's just going to kind of fall through because on the floor tag, what I need to do is click it and change shape from automatic to static mesh. And now if I play, it's going to drop on there. And what I need to do then is just hold command and copy that dynamic tag onto my sock instance. And then if I play, they're gonna kind of move all over the place because they must be overlapping. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure my instance isn't actually overlapping with my other sock so I can just get in my camera and just zoom in here and make sure that they aren't actually touching. You can see that they are a little bit and that's gonna cause them to kind of freak out. And now we can see if I play, they just kind of drop on to the floor. And that's not what we want either, because then they're just going to roll all over the place. But what I come up with to kind of set up little props for this, if we had kind of a stage, is what we can do is grab something like a tube. And I'm going to move and scale that to be around my two main socks. And then I'm going to take the inner radius and make it almost as big as the outer and move this down on top of them. And this can be a little container that constrains them. And I can't see what I'm doing now while I'm working on this. So what I can do is make just a transparent texture for this. So I'm going to double click on my textures, double click that, and I'll call it a, just this tube. And I'm going to turn off specular and color. I'm going to turn on transparency. And that basically results in nothing, which is good because then we can drag that on here in our viewport. It'll just be transparent. And then to get this to be kind of a container for these, what I'm going to do is I can hold command and drag my dynamics tag from the floor onto that tube. And now if I play, they're going to not be able to leave that little area, which is good because then we can keep pushing this. So what I'm going to do to get them set up right is a couple things is on this tube, we can see that they're still kind of sliding around in there and we can keep making sure they're close and also grab this taper deformer, put it in the tube, fit to parent. And then if we taper the top a bit and then go back and forth between scaling this up to make sure it's not intersecting with them. If I go to my main view and now if we play this, we can see that they're going to kind of fall in there, but they're not going to be able to move and they're going to get trapped. And again, they're still rolling around a bit too much, but we can see that this constraining thing is working. So what we can do to stop them from bouncing around so much is on all of these tags, there is bounce and friction and we don't want them moving at all. We want to just use this to drop them in and 
stop. So I'm going to shift and select all of these and I'll turn the bounce down to zero and our friction just way up. So now when they hit something, they're just gonna kind of stick. And I wanna take this tube up a bit so that there isn't an area for them to pass out of and then just turn that back on and make sure it's big enough to not intersect. So then from the beginning, if I play, they're just gonna drop to the ground and then kind of get stuck. And if I grab all of these again, I can keep turning it up even higher. Let's try something crazy like 1500. And then they're really gonna stick to each other. And we could even grab just the socks and let's go further. Let's try like 5,000 because we wanna make a point that they kind of collide and then kind of stick and don't move. And we get some natural movement and then we know that they're gonna be dropped to our floor. Now, to take this idea even further, if we back up, what we could do is, we can see that they kind of fall and sometimes lean forward. What we could do is duplicate our whole tube and create another one kind of as a little secondary glass floor that they could be sitting on and just kind of prop it up to make sure they also don't fall too much. So let's just put that intersecting this main one and I'll turn off my other socks now so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll just use my different views and I'm gonna put this just kind of right below where they'll fall. So once they fall, then they'll kind of sit on this little glass floor and we can prop them up really nicely. And use these little invisible dynamics tricks to kind of get a nice little set where we're dropping things in with dynamics, but we do have some control over where they fall. So then if I play, we get a little bit of nice movement. They're on the floor and we could maybe even make this a little cool little sock animation we can see that they're constrained. They don't leave this little box. And we also get our little back glass floor so this left one doesn't fall. Now we could just pick a frame here and say that this is our main shot. And then from there, kind of reposition and reposition the other one so they're actually in our shot. Now that these are just gonna kind of be the less important ones without dynamics, but to show that we got some regular color socks. And I'll just rotate that into place. And then for a final render, if I'm really going nuts and rendering this out high quality, it's a still, what we can do is go to our render settings and for global illumination, turn that on to high and that'll help the shadows and the blurry reflections come out a lot better. And then if I render this, it's gonna take a little longer, but let's take a look at how this comes out. That came out pretty nice. We can keep repositioning our camera and moving stuff around, but that's pretty much the idea. And with the still image, we would always kind of want to get close here, but bring it into a Photoshop if we're doing a still and After Effects if we're doing an animation just to do final color correction and everything we can do in compositing and photo programs. So we got our final render and just as a last little touch, I have one that I rendered out previously and this is where we got to in Cinema 4D, but it's good to in Photoshop do things like add a little bit of curve so it will push the contrast a bit and maybe pull the red channel up a bit to tint it a bit and then know that we can do another curve to create a vignette if we just pull this top one down and darken everything and then grab our circle marquee put feathering at like a hundred and just drag this and then we can do edit fill with black or option delete. And that's gonna make a mask on that. And we can get a nice little vignette on this. And our main curves, maybe pull the highlights down a bit because it's a little too contrasty. And then one thing that happened with both renders is I really like this setup and I like that they're falling on top of each other, but it isn't quite getting this shadow that I'd like to see on this sock. And rather than playing around with the lights, what we could do is on my final render, I'm just gonna make a new layer for that shadow and I'm just gonna grab a brush with B and make sure I'm on you know, a smooth brush with not so much hardness. And then I'm just gonna grab kind of a darkish brown color so it's not actual black and just kind of paint in the idea of a bit of a shadow where that would be. And then what I can do is on my main render, grab the quick selection wand and just grab that background sock. 
and option click the main sock and we'll just create a, a basic mask for that shadow on top of that sock. So I got quick little selection and we could do this better with more time, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. And then I'll just refine edge. And if I have the view set to overlay, we can see that this is our edge. So we could smooth that a bit and add a bit more contrast just so it catches that and then click OK, output the selection. And then I'm going to click on my shadow layer over here and just down here, make a mask. And that will be my shadow that I can then make a little more transparent. And again, these are very, very subtle touches, but it's really important and good to remember to always finish your renders in Photoshop or After Effects. If we're doing this still to add things like little details and color correction that seem subtle, but really make a big difference. So this was a pretty fun one to set up and we got into a lot of fun stuff like this modeling, texturing, doing some cool stuff with gradients, and even a little bit of basic dynamics to prop these things up. I hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching. And as always, subscribe on Vimeo and YouTube.com slash Sean Frangella and Facebook.com slash Vitel if you want to ask questions or request tutorials. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.